They're as British as red post boxes and fish and chips, yet they're in far-flung corners of the globe. These are the UK Overseas Territories, and they're as far afield as the South Atlantic, the Pacific and the Caribbean. Their unique wildlife and habitats make an enormous contribution to our natural heritage. They're incredibly rich in plants and animals, many found nowhere else on Earth. But these species are under threat. The remoteness of these islands means their native flora and fauna have evolved in very specialised ways. Unfortunately, the isolated development of animals like the blue iguana also makes them vulnerable. And the arrival of man has brought other, less desirable invaders. Plants and animals harmless in their own part of the world, become dangerous aliens that threaten the survival of native species by competing aggressively for resources. In many of the UK overseas territories, people rely on the natural habitat for their livelihoods. That means maintaining fish stocks, keeping good soil for farming, or looking after the wildlife that brings tourism so it's important that we take care of our islands. Conservationists are in the front line of the battle to find new ways to protect these islands. They have few opportunities to share their experiences, which is why they've come together on one of the UK overseas territories, the Cayman Islands in the Caribbean. They meet to discuss common environmental problems such as invasive species and to find solutions. This is a unique opportunity to be able to network with people across the overseas territories and in particular I'm, I'm hoping to be able to take away from this some ideas of how best to engage with invasive species issues and climate change issues that are going to really affect the small island states. The UK Overseas Territories are amazing places. If you look at the, the biodiversity in the UK, it's all on the, the Overseas Territories. Um, but the, you know, it's under enormous threat and uh, some territories have very little resources um, to deal with those threats. We've been working on the South Atlantic Invasive Species Project now for two and a half years. And this is an opportunity for us to share our experiences with other people from the Caribbean, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. Hopefully some of the lessons that we've learned on our small islands will also be applicable in the small islands further afield. The Cayman Islands have their own shining examples of how conservation efforts can help unique species to survive. Grand Cayman's indigenous blue iguanas are regaining ground after having been almost ousted by an alien rival, the introduced green iguanas that were originally imported as pets. Ultimately, we're trying to, to save the Grand Cayman Blue Iguana from extinction. Um, in 2002, the numbers were, were down to the point of like 10 to 25 left in the wild, so it was a real emergency. What we're doing here is we're breeding them in captivity, we're rearing the young until they're two years old and in good shape to survive, and we're putting them out into protected areas. Ultimately, we hope to restore a thousand in the wild and uh, try and do something about the factors that, are, that, that caused that decline in the first place. This is, this is a small tropical island and, and islands are really, really vulnerable to all kinds of impacts. There's not a lot of space to, 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 to turn to if, 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 if one area gets damaged. So we're working really hard on protected areas here, but the other big problem is invasive species, things that come from outside and, and get established. We have a huge population of Central American green iguanas living on this island now. And if people come as visitors and stay on the western side of the island, they see iguanas. Almost certainly they're not seeing the endemic Grand Cayman blue iguana at all. They're seeing this introduced thing. Um, it's kind of a case point about the, the, the problems of bringing things to islands that don't belong in islands. It's a, it's, it's, it causes immense problems. The South Atlantic UK overseas territories 
are some of the most remote places on Earth. Yet islands like Ascension are still vulnerable to invasive species. Ascension is one of the newest islands in the world, the tip of a volcanic mountain that exploded out of the Atlantic only a million years ago. In its comparatively short life, it's become home to unique wildlife and endemic plants. Ascension is globally important for ground nesting birds such as the small but fierce sooty terns, nicknamed the wide awakes for their incessant clamour. There are rare brown noddies and colonies of gannet like boobies. Green turtles swim 2,000 kilometres from South America just to lay their eggs on Ascension's beaches. No one knows why these animals choose such a far-flung dot in the ocean, but every year they come. This incredible natural world has been under intense pressure from invasive species, and historically the most dangerous of all was the cat. These cats, brought to ascension by early settlers or marooned by shipwrecks, caused havoc among the nesting seabird population. The birds had no natural predators and their nesting sites had been undisturbed for thousands of years. This cat's a pet, neutered and microchipped. Kept under control, he poses no threat but his feral cousins did enormous damage to native seabirds, causing a disastrous 98% drop in numbers since Victorian times. These are the infamous ghost colonies. Once they were home to an estimated 25 million seabirds. Now they're lifeless, a grim reminder of the damage that can be done by invasive species in only a short time. Most seabird species took flight and left the mainland. For decades, birds like Ascension's endemic frigate birds and boobies bred only on the safety of offshore rocks. No cat was going to brave the churning seas surrounding these fortresses. Only sooty terns managed to continue breeding well on the mainland. Their enormous numbers meant they could cope with the losses. But today, other seabirds are returning to the mainland. And the reason is that feral cats have been completely cleared from the island. As the colonies begin to grow, the seabirds are being carefully monitored by conservation officers. Each nest is marked and logged using GPS technology so they can check on their progress. This data is uh, stored in our computers uh, for reference. It's also uh, sent back to head office at the RSPB uh, headquarters in the UK. The uh, feral cat now has been eradicated and uh, we see we have great signs of the seabirds coming back to the mainland. That's got to be a success story. The noddies and boobies are already making themselves at home. And the team believe it's only a matter of time before Ascension's iconic frigate bird rejoins them on the mainland. Intensive conservation efforts also mean that endemic plants are coming back from the brink of extinction. The invasive plant species are a real problem for our endemic plants. We have some of the rarest endemic plants in the world today uh, on the critically endangered list. 
Plants like the Mexican thorn were introduced because they helped with erosion control. Other plants were just imported for people's gardens. But some species spread out of control to threaten native plants and change the natural landscape. Today, teams are working hard to clear these plant invaders. With funds from the European Union and support from the RSPB, the conservationists are replanting endemic grasses and ferns within the Green Mountain National Park. These vulnerable plants had also been under attack from introduced animals such as sheep and rabbits. Now they're protected behind rabbit-proof fences. Wildlife tourism is becoming an important part of the island economy, with many people coming here to watch the green turtles lay their eggs in the sand. It's vital their breeding grounds are protected, so conservationists monitor the beaches and make sure they're kept clear of human disturbance and invasive plants. Further south, another UK overseas territory is successfully giving the elbow to some of its less desirable immigrants. These are the Falkland Islands in the South Atlantic. It's a big territory, a land area about the size of Wales, but spread across 740 islands. It has an astonishingly rich variety of wildlife. It's so diverse that legendary explorer and scientist Charles Darwin made two trips to the Falklands during the 1830s and spent twice as much time here as he did in the Galapagos. Yet while Darwin was here to study the wildlife, ships such as the Beagle were responsible for bringing a dangerous and unfriendly pest to these islands, the rat. Rats cut a swathe through the bird populations of the Falklands, just as the cats did on Ascension. But here too, scientists have been coming to the rescue. Invasive species are one of the biggest problems facing uh, small island developing states today, as well as many other parts of the world. And I've spent a lot of time working on eradicating invasive rats from small islands where they've been perhaps eating native seabirds or native reptiles and things like that, and they can cause huge problems. Today, the rats are on the run, having been eradicated from more than 20 offshore islands. And already, bird numbers on these islands are starting to rise. But there are always other invaders to deal with. Farming and overgrazing have threatened the native grasses that provide valuable food and habitat for the Falklands wildlife. If you've got um, a plant that's evolved in Europe with hundreds of other plants, it has to be quite competitive. It has to grow fast, have lots of seeds, create a really dense shading canopy. The plants that have grown up on the islands, they haven't had much competition, so they're generally a bit weaker. Um, and, and when you bring in these kind of imports, often the, the local things just get lost. People come a long way to see and experience the unique flora and fauna of these islands. They travel overland and between islands to visit the seabird colonies. These king penguins don't seem to take much notice of their visitors. Yet it's important when observing wildlife that we take care not to damage their habitat. There are many ways we can help protect the environment in our overseas territories. Well, if you take your, your day pack or your rucksack and give it a good shake over the bath and have a look at what falls out of there, you can imagine what impact that would have if it fell out on, on a remote island around the world. You'd have all sorts of things popping up and growing over the years. Uh, Velcro is particularly important as well. There's a lot of seeds and small invertebrates and things like that can get stuck in Velcro bindings. Give your boots a good scrub, um, you know, get rid of any mud, anything obvious that's on there. Um, especially around your boot laces, you know, take your, your laces off and pull the tongue of your walking boots out and watch all the grime that drops out and all the seeds and that kind of thing. Socks, absolutely fantastic places for, for trapping seeds. So 
clean your socks. Better still, you know, bring a brand new pair, throw the old pair away or leave them at home. Local people also have an important role to play in preventing the spread of invasive species. Local people can make quite a difference. Uh, I could think of an example on Tristan de Cunha where the main island where the inhabitants live has had rats on it for over a hundred years and for the same length of time when the Tristanians sail to their outer islands which don't have rats they're fully aware they have to check their boats before they go to make certain that they've got rats aboard. If you're taking presents for friends that are living in these places you know a packet of seeds or a plant might not be the most appropriate thing to bring with you. Uh, as, a, as a horticulturalist by training and one of the things that I'm specifically interested in is native plant nurseries and being able to grow plants locally so that you don't have importation and therefore the potential for bringing in plants that you don't desire but then also the, the real problem with bringing in invertebrates and, and reptiles in those plants. I think on the Cayman Islands they've done something very interesting and that is they've actually set up a native plant nursery um, and they've got a whole campaign here um, to get people looking at their gardens and you know they're trying to encourage local people to use native plants in their in their gardens rather than kind of depending on exotics um, which are which are brought in. Islands have a unique conservation advantage. They're surrounded by ocean so it's actually possible to clear invasive species and prevent others from taking hold. As the harmful pests are cleared the native wildlife and plants have a chance to thrive. It's now up to us, the people of the UK Overseas Territories and their visitors, to continue to safeguard the wildlife and habitats of these unspoilt outposts of the United Kingdom. Music